yeah, I had I had people waiting. So yeah, it's been it's been a solid it's been solid all day. This is the first time first time that there's been no one in the there's been nobody in the store. So that's a good that's a good start to a Thursday. So, you know, it's three thirty. Get uh start getting the, the dinner rush. All right. Well, I have a couple things on my list too. Um, I could use a copy of uh, Fables Volume Four trade paperback. Before Watchmen, Doctor Manhattan, Number One, and uh, Justice League Dark. Uh, the one that came, I don't have the number in front of me. The one that uh, there was two things I wanted to do. I either wanted to open a variety store or I wanted to open a comic shop. I knew comics because I read comics, but I knew food and stuff because I worked. I worked for Market Basket for a bazillion years. The partner one is I wanted to do with the variety store as a partner. He he didn't really want to go and push push into it, so that's why I chose I ended up choosing the the, the comic and I found a great location. Um, and this wouldn't have been a great location for a, for a variety store. I never intended to go with a partner with a comic shop. I I, I felt it was there would be too much conflicting, conf, you know conflicting ideas on on you know what we should be buying to collect and you, you, you know it's uh we're in a we're in a, a different type of a food store that would you know i mean you get pepsi you get coke it's it's a, it's a pretty simple it's a pretty simple process hearing nothing but good stuff about the hawkeye it was it was it was fantastic what the last series of hawkeye of how many you sold and whatnot i even doubled those orders and they were still gone right instant you know almost instantly well you, you know, get the movie draw now you're 48 all right. All right. We'll see, see you later, next week. Take care. I've stayed in the same place for twenty years. I've just packed more and more stuff into into the shop. It's cluttered. But the stuff is here, and I could still stay within the means of the rent. It's gone up over years, but I haven't had a double, you know, double rent because I've got double the space. So yeah, it's you can't just be totally serious. I mean, this is a uh, comics, cards. I mean, you're, you're you're here having you're here having fun. Why would you want to just be totally serious when you come into a comic store? You, you know, I mean, it's um, it's it's stuff for your entertainment, and your enjoyment. Well, guess what? Where we we entertain ourselves too. You know, I mean, I'm here. Every I'm here every day that, you know, I gotta have you know I've gotta I've gotta entertain myself. Well, what better to have some friends around to entertain to entertain with you, you know? So, yeah. Really? Come on, Chris. You need eighteen at least, at least, you know. Out of the ten. 19. Yeah. Sixteen. Thirteen. The captain says, "Come." Eighteen. Oh. Oh. Pick Yeah. What was the next one? Diamond, yeah, yeah was going to help me. Yeah, you only had 14, actually. No, no. no, I didn't have a diamond. Yeah, you got shit. Yeah. What did you have? I wanted, I, wanted to, I wanted to show something of grandeur. Kind of out of sarcasm, too. You know, it's like, hey, look, we're great. You know, it's, uh, this is, I, I, I want my kingdom. And so when I decided to open up a shop, um, I said, all right, what can we do? Comic Emporium, you know, the Comic Castle. You know, we, we really had, and then, you know, it says, Hey, this is gonna be my palace, and you know and the jokes was I have my little minions running around, and the bottom line is I wanted to be the king of the kingdom, you know. So, you know, he wants a twenty dollar. I mean, we're giving him a full box of comics for twenty bucks, um, and now he wants, yeah, you know, I'd really like something a little better in it. And really, what do you expect? You know, what do you expect for twenty dollars? But there's some shit that's under the table that we don't want to just dump at cheap price, you know. It's uh, so. We're going through, see what we sell, see what we want to keep, and see what he'll he'll pay. These thick boxes right here have been here for 20 years that I've been here. This it finally ripped. I just turned it around. Um, they don't make these these quality boxes anymore. Oh well, they do, but they're really they're really expensive. Uh, now they go to these shitty little boxes that you have them you have them for about a year, and with people just going in and out of them, they end up uh, they all end up ripping. Yeah, so you still get some good stuff. There's some Justice League in here, some Infinite Crisis, and some newer stuff, some older stuff. Yeah, we'll start at 531. Don't tell me where to start. All right, I just did. Uh, need it. No, got it. Is it? So what do we need? Do we do we? I got it. We got it. We okay. got it. 32. Got it. He's the unofficial assistant manager of the store uh, that gets no money. He, you know, it's uh, you know, just on his day off. You know, 
he goes, hey, he goes, he goes, this is fun for me. It also gets him to look through more comics, and he knows pretty much everything that's going on. He just he doesn't know how to use the register or anything, but he gets my grab bags together all the time. He'll go through all those boxes. Yeah, he's he's a, he's a great he's a great help. Yeah, tremendous help. What's the difference? That that right there is like is, that's like there is in any movie that you see where they where they where they think back in time of of something that happened. That's the same thing, except it's on it's in it's in a comic. It's nonlinear. Right. Can that makes imagine? sense wow. because it's some guy Grant Morrison who writes non linear that, yeah. that makes okay, no yeah. sense. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it makes no sense whatsoever. Glad makes up the rules yeah. as he goes along. No, I never said I didn't like non linear storytelling. Grant Morrison can't tell non linear. The master of it. Yeah, he's a master of everyone, shit. Everyone who knows knows. Right, he's, he's the master he's of telling master. gibberish that no one understands. His ideas are that. so fucking incredible, they can't be contained in a monthly format. And so he shouldn't write them in a monthly format. No, he's challenging the monthly format readers to get his ideas. <laughs> but no one does, because you know why? Because they're fucking stupid! No, because they're looking, they're looking and says, wait a minute, I wasn't in Grant oh, Morrison's mind. Oh, wait, no, mind. goldfish, wait, oh, pretty color, wait, <laughs> oh, squirrel. The people with short attention spans <laughs> who can't fucking see things through all the way to the end. They're That's all? They're looking, they're looking at, they're give, looking. Give, you give the guy a chance to fit it, to tell his story from beginning to end. Just and tell you'll, you'll me. Get it. A good story. Well, I don't think Phil's gonna get any more. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, not at all. But Impressed. I don't think Namor shows respect to anybody. You know, it's it, you know he, he does because not show respect. You don't show respect to anybody. I respect you. Well, that's among your group of friends, but among the public in general, Namor thinks the same way you. You are fucking Namor. You are Namor. <laughs> you look at the you look at the general public as ants beneath your feet. <laughs> that's exactly what he does because they're all fucking retarded scumbags. Yeah. And you say the same thing. But you're something. You and you, to the most part, you're true. Yeah, but you, that's right. But you still have to interact with them and show the you know and show them some decency. I mean, I do. You know, but it's uh. And the dragon cried death. Oh, I am the Yellow Claw. Oh. That's not what they said. Oh, that is what the Yellow Claw had said. Oh. <laughs> Zen, you have already had to buy that kind of plan to nullify that precaution that you have taken. Oh. That thing perhaps. That sounds kind of racist. Yeah, what are you doing? No, he's the Iron Claw. That's how we talk. Oh, really? Yes. What if, what if he was from Brooklyn? He'd be like, yo. See? I'm the Iron Claw. So you don't know that he talks like that. <laughs> yeah. Yo, I am the Iron Claw. You got him all yeah, you Charlie Chan out. The, you assume because he was Oriental, you oh, just. Oh, uh, I am the Iron you Claw. Just, you know, I'm, I'm actually kind of disgusted with you now. Please. Davey's a character. He's on a di he's on a different level. I know when you push his buttons, you can you can actually get him to spaz out a little. And so that tempts me to want to push Davey's buttons more because it's funny the reaction you get from the guy. But once you get to know him, you know the guy's got a heart of gold. He wants to help out. He just wants to, you know, um, everything that he likes. Um, he's excited about everything he likes. He's, he tries to be positive about about everything. And again, he's another guy. He's another great guy to have around. So the list. Leave him alone. See, look. So, yeah, I was just going to ask you, that book, go ahead, pull it. Seven dollars worth of shit. Well, this is where you get the alpha story. Is this oh, okay? right, I see it. All of a sudden, boom, his big invention goes wrong. Zibby zap, spliggity splack. Kid gets fucking shocked with cosmic rays or whatever the hell that is. Parents are pissed off, like, hey, you almost killed my kid. Like, no, no, just back off. I'm gonna put some tests on him. Mr. Fantastic and Ant Man's gonna sort him out. Plus, Iron Man's there too. Hey, Dave, yeah. Take care of. Why don't you just mind your fucking business? Whoa! Hey, in 15 minutes, whatever we're done doing. Hey! We're done. You know what? That's okay. You walk away in the middle of me telling you a fucking story, all right? I don't care story. at all. He was walking away. I wasn't even talking to no him. He shit. just walked away. Yeah. yeah walked I'm away in the middle of getting the snap. What the fuck that kid Alpha's all about? <laughs> and he's like, hey, bud, what's going on over here? Yeah. You he walked away. He way he on you. Me just yeah. walk off right now while he's telling you the story. Yeah, I should, right? Yeah. yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Inconsiderate. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, take right, this. Your list. Red guy. <laughs> Motherfucker. Here's your list. Biatch. American Vampire. Fuck that shit. Archer Armstrong. Ooh. Wait a minute. It ain't coming out the seat. It's a reorder. It's coming out. Yeah, it's a reorder. <laughs> <laughs> Avengers Assemble. <laughs> Animal Man. Hold on a second, dude. I'm sorry. I got distracted. I had a freaking text. It's important. Uh huh. Alright. It's a good thing he wasn't true. Oh, we, we, we ready? On the wax, man, you said. Because then you distract me with the whole fucking. It comes in three weeks, it's a reprint. Da, 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 da. And you said yes. Michael Avon Omings, The Victories. That sucked. That was the worst book. Who bought that with me? You? I, I, I read it too. Yeah, and that I, was, it was, that was the worst book of the week that week. It came that's out. the worst book of a couple weeks. Yeah. 
Green Hornet. Green Lantern Corps or Corpse for the Dummies. Mm. Memoir. Is that the fuck? Is that finally no the way. book that you tried to sell me? That you sold me? Oh, let's see, well, how many years ago? You told me about it. It was so good that I was like, yeah, get that shit. And then it was good, it was good, it was good. It came out consistently. Until the last and then issue. the last issue, a year and a half fucking later, yeah. what so, the fuck so was going no, on? You're not buying it? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm buying it. Of course okay. I'm buying it. <laughs> if you think of a dork or a nerd, it's Phil. Big Bang Theory, it's Phil. Yo, they, they changed the DC comics. He's like, oh, you can't change the stuff. I mean, change, change is not good with that guy. If you change something, though, that enthusiasm gone to, I don't like it. I don't like it. He's like an old man, but I love the guy. These were a hell of a lot better than what's coming out now. In my opinion, it is. The new audience isn't as, isn't more important than the old audience. So, you know, I think all they gotta do, and I know I get kidded for saying this, but give me a good story. That's all I need. I don't need DC to come out with any flashy new format or flashy new power for somebody or a reset or a revamp. Just give me a good story. And I think since Dan Didio has stepped in, the the content of the books and the quality of the books I think has been horrible. Don't don't change the classics, don't mess with things. This is how the story has been for 75 years. Leave it alone. That's right. Tradition. You tell me one kid who today would not know Superman's origin. Yeah, but you're going to tell me one kid that gives a shit of what Superman's origin was till you modernize it, and they say, all right, I can relate to this. Wow, he grew up on a farm. Look at this. He's got this old tractor he lifted over his head. You know, every 20, 25 years, you've got to change things around so a new generation will actually appreciate what's going on. Nobody from this generation, matter of fact, nobody from my generation except for you cares about the 1939 Superman. It, yes, I, I, I understand You're the only that. one. I understand that, but you don't throw out the old it's like throwing out the baby with the bathwater. You don't yeah, throw yeah, they, out. Yeah, they throw it out. Hey, this happened in 1939. Yeah. This is the new. This is the new era. Get used to it. Well, give me the new era, but yep. don't tell me Mr. schlock you know, stories. So, so I mean, you, you don't have a computer at your house, right? Yeah, I do, but why? Don't, don't why? Because tell that, me that, that took stories. away the. Only, you need the telegraph. You know, it's uh. Right now, Superman would still be a virgin. All right. How do you know he isn't? <laughs> <laughs> he's not just a virgin, he's a super virgin. <laughs> you know? People who never read X-Men, they picked up the Grant Morrison X-Men and said, wow, this is the best X-Men, this, this, this story is great. Well, every other X-Men person was going, this book is awful, you know? Same with you too, I don't read X-Men, oh, wow, this is great, because you, you, you have nothing to compare it to. No, no, yeah, you, no. read, you read Iron Man in 1922. See, stuff like that back in that time, I enjoyed that, I like that stuff. Yeah, I liked it too, in, in that time. But these are the books that got you into the comics, too. Sure they were. Sure they were. But guess what? I'm in the comics now, but I'm, I'm, I'm into comics, and it's modern now. You don't have to grasp at the past and just and have to hold on to it. It's okay to let go saying, of the past and, and look at the future. The past. I'm not saying you have to hang you on do? to You do? That's you! I am saying. I am Mr. I'm not letting go of the past. Here's, no, here's no, the no, past. No. Here's, here's Phil. I no. am saying. No, no, I'm not, don't drag me into the, into the, into the 21st I'm century. Saying. You can modernize it, but you keep the basic principles the same. This is a different world. It's a darker world. Okay, so you've you, you got to change it because no why, one... Why does it have to be a darker world? Because real life, this is a darker world now. If you had it your way, there would be... All comic stores would be downstairs... In a in a dark, dreary basement, no, no, um, no. Where, where where six or seven people go in to buy comics, no. you wouldn't see you wouldn't see women in comic stores if it was if it was still your no, if it was still no, your no, way. No, 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 yeah, that's not true. That is not ah. true. This is this is what we this is what we do. This is what we get for laughter every every day. But you know, for people on the outside that see it, they're like these guys are vicious. But you know, it's not. You know, you you you, you get on you get on the inside. You realize it's just a bunch of friends just goofing off. If I wasn't here, I probably wouldn't have met my wife. You know, it's um, because the person that introduced us came here. You know, so I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm happy that I'm, I'm happy that I did it. My brother, my brother grew up here. I'm 14 years older than my brother. Um, I got to hang out with him so much as, you know, growing up and uh, he met friends here, you, you know, so it was a pretty good social gathering, pretty good social gathering too. It's a one man show. If, if I'm sick, I don't come in. I don't make any money, you, you know. So yeah, I mean, so you get you get those days. You get those days. You come in. You get a cold. You're feeling like crap. Most people just call in sick, stay in bed. 
nope, you lug, you lug your sorry ass in here and you're miserable for the whole day. You know, again, you hope that those days are, are the slower days of the week so you can be miserable but don't have to deal with as much, with as much stuff. I need a couple of Clementines a day. Don't feel the packs, dude. I'm not, I got four of them. Dude. Good. Right. Right. There you go. Thank you. Yeah. He probably thinks, all right, the thick one, I'm going to get something out of it. But a lot of times you get you get this shit out of it, you know, so. <laughs> it seems like an awful lot of work for one pack. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you were going through and, and sorting things out, feeling, because after you told him not to feel the packs, he was lining them that up next to each other so we could see compare the thicknesses of them. That's an awful lot of work just to buy one pack. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's a little, it's a little amusement. I mean, I've thrown people out, but he's he's the one that you can you can have and just get laughter from all the time afterwards. You know, it's you know he actually just brightened up my day today. <laughs> yeah. Hey, did the new fables come out? Oh, yeah, the one the one that says fables right there. Yeah, that that one. That one? Yeah, that's, that's it right there. Yeah, yeah all right. One twenty. One twenty. I thought I lied. One twenty came out, not one twenty one. The only way I wouldn't be reading comic books is if I just couldn't afford it. I'd still come down here every every month and see what came out, but I probably wouldn't be buying anything if I had like bills and everything. But I don't have a, I don't really see myself quitting comics anytime soon. I, I don't really go anywhere without a comic somewhere near me. I started coming to the Comic Book Palace back in high school when I got sick of going to Chris's Comics in Salem, just too far away. I still go occasionally if I can't find something here at Glenn's, but I, I just like hanging out here, you know, making friends with the people who come here, and I really like Glenn personally. And he'll cut you a deal every once in a while. Uh, reading Green Arrow or Yellow Books, I wanted to see and Revolution. It like well, I come down every Wednesday. And then I come Saturday afternoons to discuss things with Glenn and a couple of other guys in the shop. Um, and then I might stop in every once in a while. I used to live right next door. I was here three to five times a week at that point. But now it's I live a little further away. But so in a month, two, four, six, eight, eight to ten times. I would say on average, twenty-five bucks, so a hundred bucks a month. <laughs> He's got no he's special strength, no endurance. And he's the man without freaking fear. It should be a good fight. Batman? Dude, are you look kidding at, me? Look at some of the guys that Daredevil's fought over the years. Yeah, he's got that stuff that Batman doesn't have. He's saying, Understandable. Like, for Daredevil for and Batman us. fight, who wins? Batman. Who would win the fight between Batman and Superman? Everyone will say Batman will beat Superman because he's smarter. He'd, he'd outsmart him. He'd figure out a way to beat him. Well, they've, written him, they've already written Batman right. to, to but beat if, Superman. If, so if he can beat Superman, how the fuck would he not beat Daredevil? Right. He's gonna! You guys are arguing about who would win that cannot and never will exist. What are you reading over there, Choo Choo? <laughs> Flashpoint. And who fights in that? Fictional people in a fictional fight. Right, it's right. fictional! Right. We need some non-fictional medication. <laughs> yeah. 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 How you make the jump? What's your name? James. Nice meeting you. Cause you're like, how the hell do you make the? Why are we talking that about kid, a fictional character? He it doesn't was, matter. He's like, I'm gonna. I, like, I think Did I'm he gonna, say who cares? I, I'm gonna yeah. grab you and thrash you, young man. <laughs> DC, they usually call. They call every Thursday. So it's good. They they call all the time. Marvel never calls. You never get a you never get a call from Marvel. DC once a week, once a week, every Thursday they uh they make a call. See if you want re. I mean it, it makes it easy. Um, I don't have to get code numbers to you know or, or whatnot. It's just you make a list. They call. They'll tell you what's going on. They're not trying to sell you anything. They're just trying to make it easier for you to do reorders. You know. So later in the week, if I need one or two things, I'll just do it <laughs> online when I when I go and do my other stuff. Um, but it's a good thing. You talk to a rep that you have questions about something that they, they can answer it for. You know, so you know, sometimes I go through back issues, uh, through the you know trade paperbacks. Like, Man, I got to order like 25 different trade paperbacks, and you know I'm out of this, I'm out of this, I need this. I'll just make the list, and now I don't have to punch it in the computer. I mean, he just calls, yeah, one of these, one of these, one of these, two of those, two of those. Okay, thanks, done. You know, so they just give suggestions. You know, it's I, I love it. You know, I'm, I'm glad they call. It makes life easier. So, you know, it seems like the, the big sellers are, are your more mainstream stuff, usually superheroes, where the stuff that's your independent stuff, which a lot of times are better stories, they tell a good story, 
they've got some decent art um, and it's just some it, it starts off as some struggling guy trying to put out something good um, the, and, and, it, and it's very, very good where they'll get noticed by the big, the big companies and they'll start writing mainstream. mainstream. Some people don't want to do it. They say, no, nah, I, I, I don't like the restrictions of that. I like to be able to just write anything I want. It seems to me like the mainstream stuff, the DC, the, the Marvel, um, not a huge, huge amount of things change with it as you go. I mean, you get the same characters for the most part, the same type of storylines. They'll try to change things up as they go. Um, the independent books, they, they're free to do whatever they want. You know, they can put things out yes. that have yep. never been seen before and, and are completely original. Yeah, they're not going to let you take somebody like Spider-Man who's been around for 50 oh, yeah. years and, uh, you know, turn him into something and, and, and change the whole mold on it. But I'm surprised at how the, the level of adult content has been raised, you know, over the uh, last decade or so. I mean, there are some people that are doing digital that are going to do digital because they're never going to leave their house anyways to go to go anywhere else. I mean, so it, that's not that's not going to matter. On the plus side, there's the the brighter colors. On the minus side is it doesn't feel as natural to go from one page to another. And like my daughter's three now, she may end up, that's the only way she knows comics. And I understand that, but I don't think it's going to be the death of the industry or anything like that. It'd just be a different way, no different than when trades came out. Oh, it's going to kill. It didn't kill anything, it just changed the way people read it. Something about like having the actual issue in your hand and flipping the pages. It's, it's nice, rather than having some iPhone just going, mm, it doesn't feel right to me. If they say, hey, we're not printing up comics anymore, same thing with newspaper and magazine. You can only read them on your computer. I'm not reading comics anymore. Yeah. Do I need to check this to make sure it's still in the box? <laughs> oh, he's still there. Yeah. Church black costume statue that Master Replicas put out. Uh -huh. I got it off of eBay for like 40 bucks, 50 bucks. Came out like... It's five years ago, something like that. They look good. I actually like the, I, I, cool. I like the statue too. The color blues came out. Yeah. Huh? This is Kota Baki, you know. I know. Are you all right? Yeah, I was, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Because you know, it's it's not plastic that you have to put twelve pieces together on it. There must be a web that goes in there. I'll You'll store uh, it for me. I'll store it for you. Then you can come and see it anytime you want. Yeah. I'll still own it. Yeah, you'll still own it. It's yours. Huh. <laughs> there it goes. Yeah. Yeah. So now tell me you're going to at least take this out of the box and display it. I just did. It. Anyway, did forever. No, no, no. no. I, I no. So Not only if I had another one. Right in the middle. You don't have photogenic fingers for this, you know? No, I don't. I have them, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm very ashy. A little more. Yeah. You've used your hands in your life. You've over the power. There was a time when I didn't. Corey, you'll be able to get it. Actually, Corey, you're going to be pretty big meat hooked yourself, brother. No, it's got to go on your middle finger, pal. No way. It fits. Oh, he is the one! That's right. Oh my God! Him. Look at him! Yeah, he, you, you're getting a little Kyle, ugly. Back up, Are you Kyle! Back up! Back up. Because do you have a green girlfriend? Fine. Oh, he's definitely Kyle. Take one. And he said that's the hardest. I'm taking one at this point, my friend. Solicit. Some kids, some customers, some kids came in. They draw. Most of them were kids that drew them and says, "Hey, uh, will you hang up some? Will you hang up some of my artwork?" I just hang it up just because I know it makes them feel good. You just want them to, to feel good about themselves, and maybe they'll continue drawing. Obviously, you know, some of them are eight years old, nine years old. It's not that great. It's but for an eight-year-old, it's 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 good artwork, and you know maybe that'll give them a confidence boost, and they'll they'll continue with it. And who knows? Maybe that could be a future comic book artist. That's you know, and you know, and then a couple of adults that did it too. That I that I uh, that I'd put it up. But I like it when the kids you know kids actually put it up. The, the only thing that stinks when you when you pull it down. Oh, why is my art off now? Because it was on for three months. You know, I get some other kids stuff to go on. But yeah, yeah. So yeah, I just I just put it up. Makes the kids happy. Again this week, it looks like UPS dropped the dropped the box on its corner, and uh, so I had to call in a bunch of damages this week. Were you were you angry with them? I was angry actually, Parker. He didn't masturbate enough. <laughs> well, the outrush not good. Well, start. you get yeah, you get this, you get some, you get. Oh, that's shitty art. You got um, Ramos. Roberto Ramos doing one of them. They just they just found some guy on the street. <laughs> they said, "Hey, oh, you're homeless. You need you need some food. Yeah, come and draw this buck. We'll give you we'll give you a sandwich." Fifty percent, and the artwork has to be. At least decent, a little decent to where you can, like, get past bad art work. I like it to be a little more on the realistic side, you know what I mean? Like, I don't like it too cartoony. I like to take a little bit more liberties with it, like, just kind of get a little... Bullshit. Yeah, you like it, yeah, like, you like, um, different. Alex Maleev. Yeah, who's the Batman guy that you like? Oh, oh, always, oh Kelly Jones. Yeah, he likes Kelly Jones, but Kelly Jones gives you, like, a... 
Yeah, yeah. Get out check version of Batman. Not the, uh, um, yeah. And I like more like I the... Like I said, more, more classic. Fo- yeah, the classic <laughs> approach or the photorealistic approach, you know what I mean? I mean, obviously I'm biased because I work with him. Mike Mignola, he never wants to let a page out of his hands because he never thinks it's done. And that's an artist, man. You know, I mean, that's somebody who, who cares. The artwork is The artwork is secondary. But, I mean, if it's really bad artwork, I may not give it a chance to see how good of a story it is. John Romita Jr. John, John Romita, Romita Jr. Jr. Romita Jr. He's really, he draws really boxy faces. And yeah, like, like His angular. backgrounds lack any kind of detail or depth whatsoever. If he's on a book, I love Avengers, one of my favorite books. He started when they rebooted it recently, was on it, and I couldn't read it. And that's the first time I'd probably say that about an artist, so. But for some reason or another, he's still popular. You know, it's know. just like... It's like goddamn Justin Bieber. Oh. <laughs> it sucks, and it's still out there. So is there anything by Graham Morrison that you like? Yeah. Uh, really. No, uh, really. So on the Graham Morrison spectrum, there's you on this end, and there's Corey way over here. Well, I don't know what Corey is smoking to make him like him that much, but I don't think he's that great. I don't you don't see, see the vision. I do not. I haven't drunk the uh, Grant Morrison Kool-Aid yet. You're the same type of person who would have cut Michael Jordan off his high school team. Well, he's had a long time to be a superstar and he hasn't superstarred out yet. So for you. For me he is. He's just too unconventional. He just sucks. I mean, giving, giving Batman uh, Damien. I mean, you know, why did he pull that out of his ass? What the hell? That was retarded. To piss you off. He did a very successful job there. What about very Happy? I didn't read it. Why? It was Grant Morrison. Why would I? Why would I put crap? Because in my it's pile? his own universe. Why would? It's, yeah, which is where you got to be to read and understand his crap. No, I've seen non-linear stuff, and this is there should be another word for his stuff. He ruined the X-Men. Some of his Batman stuff is the worst Batman I've ever read. There's a guy down the comic shop, Corey. His favorite writer is probably my least favorite writer, and that's that. I have a hard time with Grant Morrison. My friend Corey will say it's his non-linear approach. I just, I get lost, I guess. Maybe my reading comprehension isn't the best. I mean, I've got like kind of a love-hate relationship with Grant Morrison. I wanted to gouge my eyes out for having to read some of his crap. You know, so, yeah, I think Grant Morrison is a is a killer, a killer of comic books. Oh, yeah, I, mean, I, know, yeah. I, know the, I know the box price yeah. you're charging me is incredible, so I wouldn't, yeah. I would, no, I was just... But, like, off sick. supplies and stuff, I can't, I, like, supplies yeah, and stuff, yeah, I can't, yeah. I can't do discounts on that. I mean, they're pretty low as, as yeah, it is, yeah. you know, it's, well, uh, You know, it was just one of those, if you don't ask, then you yeah. don't know. No, I don't like the, I don't like the people who've never been in the shop before. Hey, I plan on spending this money. What sort of deal are you going to give me? Who are you? I mean, if the store's packed full of things, hey, what are you going to give me for a deal? You're not getting anything. The guy came into the store and he wanted to buy some issue of Amazing Spider-Man. I don't remember what it was. I think it was Spider-Man, though. He asked Glenn, you know, would you take $25 for it? And Glenn's like, 25 bucks? It's, it's $100. And the guy says, uh, would you take 30 And Glenn's like, no. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll give it to you for 80 how about 40? And Glenn said, now it's 90. <laughs> and the guy said, and the guy's like, what? What? You just said it was 80. No, now it's 90. Do you want it or not? And the guy said, how about 50? And Glenn took the comic out of the sleeve and tore it up right in front of the guy and said, I'd rather have nothing than, and then take $50 from you. Get out of my store. <laughs> Which I just love. And I know people say that's not the way you do business, but, you know, Glenn has the luxury of being able to do business however the hell he wants. At the end, it's all a good day, because still, when I closed up the store, even if it was slow and you didn't make a lot of money, there was nobody telling me what to do. Uh, you know, I made my hours. I did what I needed to do. There was no boss, you know, there was no boss. Do this, do this. Oh, you weren't good enough for this. You weren't good. No, it all came down was nobody told me what to do. So when I close the doors and go home, it's still a good day. And when I come in the next day, I came in because I wanted to come in. Didn't come in because, well, I still have to. I mean, you gotta, you got to pay your bills. But it, I didn't come in because someone was, someone was drilling my ass. Get in here. Oh, and by the way, when you're in here, make sure this gets done, this gets done. No, I know it's going to get done. I do, I, I do it. And then again, you, go, you, you get to go home. And no one, bossed, no one bossed you around. So it's always, at that, in that sense, it's always a good day. <laughs> yeah. I, no. Yeah. I mean... 
I don't know. Some of them I really like. Some of them I really didn't like. Like I did not like Captain America. I thought really? It was kind of goofy. And See, silly. I, I like that. I like that one a lot. I didn't like that one. Yeah. Loved Iron Man. Yeah, the Iron Man was my Iron Man one is well until Avengers just came out. Iron Man one was my yeah. favorite comic. Didn't book like movie. Iron Man two at all. I think that yeah, comic book movies are getting better. I grew up wishing there was a Spider-Man movie, wishing there was going to be a Fantastic Four movie. And as a kid, I never, still never got to see it. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't until I was an, an adult. Blade, Blade sells four comics. You know, I mean, very few people care about Blade, but it did very well for for, for what it was, for for the movie that it was. What was that one with Carmen Electra? Carmen Electra. No, she had one. Yeah, That's it. right, man. There it is. Um, X-Men First Class was excellent. The Fantastic Four movies are horrible. Daredevil was not good. The decision-making process is hugely flawed. People who have never read comic books before are, you, you know, know everything there is to know about about the Avengers or, or Batman or anything like that, and it's just it's very aggravating because they haven't put the time in, and they they don't care about it the way that a lot of the people that come here do. Just seeing these characters on screen, as opposed to in, in a book, is it's enough for me. I'm happy with it, so I, I like it, but it can get it can get aggravating. All the X-Men movies, I just thought, absolutely terrible. Yeah, they just, they make the even that recent they, first they, class, they, I mean, it was a little bit better, but they, make them almost, they started off with all different characters starting the school as opposed to what actually happened. I can't think of the last one I saw these days that was so terrible, I even came close to walking out. They've been mostly pretty decent. I loved how Robert Downey Jr. Uh, plays Iron Man. He just... He hits the nail right on the head. Um, so I've learned to not take take the movies with a with a, with a, uh, with a grain of salt. Right. Not letting Joss Whedon make his Wonder Woman movie. Whoever made that decision should be fired. And I was just I, I couldn't believe that. The Walking Dead, perfect example. My dad didn't even know it was a, a comic book. I said I have all the hardcovers downstairs. Gave it to him, and he. He reads it, not regularly, but anytime I go up to visit him, I bring one and he loves it. Road Warrior was like another ultimate Jack Kirby movie. Like if someone had made a, a movie through uh, Jack Kirby's sense of sensibilities. You know. It's okay for what it is. Ghost Rider is a third-rate character to begin with, and that's being nice to Ghost Rider. If you had to give up something, if you couldn't afford to buy a book that week, Ghost Rider is most likely the one you're gonna dump. Yeah, yeah. So be, yeah, Thursday night they're opening up. Walmart's opening up at third, and Rockingham Rock Rock Mall's opening up. I have to wait. Thanksgiving night. Yeah, I've, I've never done a Black Friday sale. So figured I'd do something, do something to try to spice it up. Yeah, I don't understand why these stores open. Oh, I'm gonna open up at two in the morning. So, yeah, you know, that's great. You can you can open up at two in the morning. Open at two, that's you open so people at two, open two. Thursday. No, I'll be open up uh, one o'clock. Yeah, but I did. Yeah, I did. Have someone asked me, "Did hey, you open up at? Uh, you open up early?" No. <laughs> and drugs. <laughs> We took the old, the old racks. You remember, you remember the uh, the tray paperback racks. They had, with where they were, they, all the things were facing out like this. We made new shelves, to, so now everything can show the spine. Everything is in alphabetical order. You can find it. Well, most people can find it. There's still people who don't know their alphabet that still will need help. The tables came out about here. You could tell, you could tell where the, the old rug, the way the old rug looked, that was never walked on. To, to, to this, so the tables would would come out to here. So we could never have done this before, because there wouldn't have been enough room for two people to walk. My father made two new two new tables. So instead of having just fold out tables, he just made some tables shorter. Bang! We got an extra extra foot foot and a half, and now it actually looks like. I mean, you could fit two people down this aisle, except for some people that come in the store. But most people, you can fit two people down the store uh, down this aisle. And you're not even going to bump into each other. It was it was brilliant. Wish we had thought of it 15 years ago. The key was that middle thing right down the middle of the back issues. You know, the, the binders and stuff aren't there anymore. Yeah, I think it's uh, I think it was great. My brother did my brother did a great job. My father did an awesome job making the shelves, making the tables, and 
my friends uh, did, a, did a great job helping out the past couple weeks. This week is poker week, so that's not going to happen. We actually gave up poker weekend one weekend to do this. Yeah. The one that I have for Tom, the one that I have to save for Paul J. Das is $225 now, so. Oh, word? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, it's not 80 bucks anymore. Let's get that shit on the wall. And you know how much I don't like Jack Kirby, Kirby right? Yep. I think Jack Kirby's... What is Mobius draw like? Can you see? Is that Mobius right there? Yeah. I don't really have Mobius draw it. <laughs> That's not Mobius's best work. I, but if, if we were just comparing, though, yeah, his Silver Surfer, if we were doing his Silver Surfer to Jack Kirby... Yeah. Um, that the sequence... Right there? Could that be, kind of looks like it, yeah. Yeah, the sequence in like Crimson Tide like was style. written by Quentin Tarantino. Yeah. He was like a script doctor on the oh, yeah. movie. Yeah. Well, I would actually, I would pick Jack Kirby Silver Surfer better than Mobius Silver Surfer. Well, okay, well. I mean, this, hope for you yet. Well, I mean, look at this artwork. I would rather, yeah. I would rather see Jack Kirby's artwork than, than, this, than this type of artwork. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. I like that style. Well, that artwork looks like, like John Romita Jr. What are you oh, talking about? Uh, so you're probably looking at 50 books to go up. 50 new books? Uh, at least 50 new books. All right. Um, but we're gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull all the Batmans down. You stop pulling stuff down. I don't have anything to put up. You know, um, I haven't looked through any of that DC stuff to say, oh, this Green Lantern 32 belongs up here because I haven't looked through that yet, you know? Oh, I found this another. I found the Spider-Man 98 here too. It's 40 bucks. Well, yeah, what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna take some stuff that's been on the wall for a while, and we're just gonna put some new stuff up and just and just move it around. I mean, some stuff we're just gonna switch from one side of the wall to the other just because it looks like it looks like you actually put new books up. He knows his stuff. He knows what he's talking about. He's excited about the industry. That's what's the great part about it. He's excited about it. And if if you see somebody, you're buying something from somebody like this, who's as excited about it as you are. It just makes it easier. You want to give him the business rather than somebody who's just in it for the almighty dollar. When he discusses books, I don't think that he's uh, negative and any bashes um, things unnecessarily. I know there are a lot of people that to kind of take the fun out of comic book re reading, and I've, I've never had that experience. My love of comics stems from something that brings me back to how it felt to read those comics when I was a kid, how much I enjoyed them. That's what the atmosphere of the comic book palace should be. You're there because you love comics. Yeah, we came back and she was happy. He's all right. But then after a while, like he, he I owe money. He, he could read more grammar. <laughs> he actually moved and stayed. He has you owe money. I, mean, he I owe money. And so that's why I'm here. Twenty years ago, you didn't know if you were going to make it three weeks. You know, you're living, you're living day by day. But there'll still always be people who will want to read, you know, read comics, have them in hand, collect something. It's been a great twenty years, and I'm hoping for, hoping for at least another twenty more.
yeah, I've never been embarrassed by it. I've never been embarrassed by it at all. I mean, I'll talk to anybody. I mean, I can go to any party. What do you know? I own a comic shop. Oh, really? You read comics? No, I just own a comic shop. Yeah, of course I read comics, you idiot. You know, it's, uh, 